A Gross Point teenager who nearly died from vaping opens up about his experience and the vaping crisis in our community. How commonplace was it at, uh, among not just your friends, among, but like, everybody at high oh, school? It's more rare to find someone who doesn't, I would say. And going on even in school because mm -hmm. it's so easy to hide, right? Yeah, it's like not... people do it in classes and bathrooms mostly. If you were with us today at five for the first time, you met the Gross Point teenager who was the first person to need a double lung transplant because of vaping. There was nothing gradual about what Daniel Lamette went through either. It was a chillingly fast descent into crisis. And tonight our Devin Skillion has a closer look at the vape habit that so many of Daniel's friends continue to indulge. I was in the house and he texted or called me and said, I, I can't breathe. So I went upstairs to his room and I said, we'll just go to the ER now. Tammy Ament put her son in the car, not knowing he wouldn't be back home for nearly two months. Actually, he very nearly never made it home at all. How long was it before you started to think that this was maybe going to kill him? Um, I don't think I ever thought that. You didn't? Mm-mm. Even, even when it was time to, 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 when they said he needs a transplant, you didn't feel that? No. Wow. I don't know why. I had two friends who I met, and they were just always very positive, and I kind of just kept them by me. That positivity worked out. Daniel became the first recipient of a double lung transplant due to vaping. Somewhere back in the middle of your whole experience, the governor you know, uh, put down a, uh, an executive order that was designed to get all of the flavored vaping liquids away from young people. Yeah. Did it have any influence on whether you or your friends could get a hold of anything? No, not at all. It really doesn't matter to kids as much as like adults think it do what flavor it is. It's really just the nicotine. In fact, it was just two days after the move by Governor Whitmer to outlaw flavored vape products that Daniel headed for the emergency room. And the thing is, vaping had long been a topic of discussion in the immense house. Tammy was terrified of all she'd heard it could do. And again and again, she worried that her 16-year-old twin sons were doing it, just as seemingly all of their friends were. Vaping was very much in your mind as being a problem. Yeah, and they were both very distant um, in their rooms a lot, just gone. They wouldn't talk, it was hard, and then yeah, I was just trying to deal with it. There may not be such a thing as the good old days of smoking, but at least it meant a smoky haze and a strong smell of cigarette smoke on clothing that made the habit harder to hide. Not so with the wondrous vape pen, which allows kids to get away with smoking just about anywhere, even in class. All I heard about it was like, oh, it's so much healthier than cigarettes, like it can't hurt you, stuff like that. And I just tried it and I didn't see any real issue to it, but I would still try not to do it that much because I didn't want to get addicted to it. He doesn't think he was addicted, but he enjoyed it and he liked it when he tried vaping marijuana. Now he sees all he traded. Long a sailing fanatic, he can no longer swim in Lake St. Clair, too dirty for his immune system. Going back to school seems risky with the flu season in full bloom. And he's on a regimen of about 20 pills a day hoping his body doesn't reject the new lungs giving him a second chance. No, none of it was worth all he's been through. A lot of my friends are still addicted to like nicotine, so I'm like trying to get them to stop. So my, a lot of my conversations with them are still like kind of related to the situation. Some people are just like, they just don't think it'll happen to them. Like they think they're invincible, which I think I had feelings like that too. And you would tell them now what? that like look at me when you talk to daniel and his mother there is an unspoken sense of frustration in the house not so much because of what happened but because of what is happening daniel's twin brother david is hooked on his vape pen and even with everything he's watched happen he just can't kick the habit and any kid who came in he would you know tell them to stop vaping and david stopped for a while but then he started back up what have these conversations been like with David? It's just hard. It is a very delicate time in the Ament household right now, but Daniel is focusing on two things. First, getting back to full and fit health. But second, launching his nonprofit called Fight for Wellness and been helping young people get out of the vaping habit. Devin Skillion, Local 4.
Boy, I bet there's a lot of parents out there like me who've had sure. that discussion and now rethinking the answers you got from your kids wondering Absolutely. Were they being honest? I didn't realize how easy it is. He said that some kids even do it in class, that you can just kind of slip it and, and not even, nobody knows. I'd heard about school, but not in the classroom. Yeah. Boy, that's really surprising. If you want to see Devin's first story, by the way, that aired at 5 o'clock with Daniel, it's on clickondetroit.com, along with a resource guide for parents to help deal with yeah. vaping. Yeah, really, really good information there.